Hello everybody, welcome back to a brand new episode of our F122 My Team Career Mode here on the channel. I hope you all having a great day. Today we go racing here in the Japanese GP. Formula 1 finally returns to Japan uh, after the pandemic. So very excited for this one here as we continue to work on adapting our parts here uh, for the regulation changes that are coming next season. Fresh off of a very uh, rough episode in the last one with uh, DNF and both Monza as well as the Singapore Grand Prix. They were both extremely rough on us there with the what a retirement on lap 11 and then the penultimate lap in Singapore both with of course uh, parts on the engine giving away Charles Leclerc though locked up the drivers championship so Charles Leclerc is this season's champion and we still have uh, you know Japan we got Kota we got uh, Brazil Mexico Abu Dhabi all coming up here before the season is even over so Leclerc has a nice cruise here uh, to the championship and this kind of opens the door maybe actually a little bit for some maybe chaos to take off here I mean no one's really going to care now uh that Leclerc's won the title. They can race him however they want. Get those elbows out. Maybe get a little bit more aggressive with Charles Leclerc. Uh, so we'll have to wait and see what happens with that. But nonetheless, uh, we come through in the, to, into this weekend here in uh, Suzuka. And I, I didn't quite know what to expect here. It's been a minute since I've driven this circuit. This is a circuit I took off of my uh, calendar in F1 2021. So it, it's certainly been a minute since I've come to here. Uh, but it's always a track that I, I enjoy. But it was it's kind of a track that I never really remembered. It's always a forgettable track to me. Uh, Suzuka is it's a unique one though this S section first section first sector uh, always so technical and you got to really get that down and there's so much time to be either gained or lost there but and we were coming through our race strategy programs and uh, everything was going pretty well and I was really trying to focus on doing as many practice programs I could even without doing the quick practice because there's a bit of a glitch apparently where that wears out the parts quicker uh, and I'm just trying to get as many resource points as we possibly can so that way we can adapt all these parts on this car and of course uh, get some new parts built for next season because as you guys know with the regulation changes we have stopped focus over the last three episodes of development on this car for this season and we put all the focus on season two we knew uh, season one was all about just building the car we weren't going to have a competitive car and that's certainly been the case we've been a lot less competitive in this last half of the season than we were in the first part of the season which is kind of expected with the approach that we're taking uh, but I'm confident that we're going to have a pretty good car going into season two uh, hopefully a midfield car at least and you can as well do see we do take a grid penalty by the way with one of the uh, engine part changes that we are taking here uh, but today we could be seeing quite a few grid penalties for a lot of drivers on the grid so then, we come through into qualifying here. A little bit of overcast conditions now as we were ready to put uh, our Trancos car on the track. Can confirm, we have a new livery on the way actually for season two. Uh, still Trancos branding. We're not going to have a title sponsor next season. Uh, but hopefully in, say, season three, we'll have a big title sponsor come on board here uh, as uh, Justin Marks and the sponsor department continues to look for that here now as we uh, come through into our first qualifying lap. And our first attempt here in qualifying in Q1 was okay. It wasn't fantastic fantastic here, uh, but we were uh, coming through and hitting our marks relatively well. There was a couple of apexes that I certainly uh, I noticed that I could definitely hit better uh, on that second attempt here. So into the final chicane, you can see a mistake right there though, uh, outbreaking myself there, and then actually kind of cut over the left-hander. Fortunately, no invalidated lap time for that, so we come through to cross the line and it's currently P8. We know we're going to drop down the order, so of course we make a second lap late in the session here when we were down to now P17. Verstappen's only P16. Yellow flag's out on the uh, circuit, uh, but it would be very very quickly back to green here now as we get past Charles Leclerc. Uh, he lets us go at a convenient spot. We were gaining a little bit of time in the uh, first and sector and a half basically and then through the hairpin we gained a good chunk of time. Now nearly six tenths of a second better and it just continues to climb and climb and climb into the positive now. Nearly nine tenths of a second to the good uh, as we came through into this final chicane here. All about hitting our marks there and actually we hit our apexes very well and we're going to gain about nine tenths of a second maybe even close to a full second as we come through to cross the line and we briefly go to P12, but with the track house racing machine, with it being so slow in reality, that it was nowhere close to that P12, and instead it was going to be right at the bottom of the grid here. P21, P22 for track house with myself and Oscar Piastri. Let's set up the grid and see where we actually start with a bunch of grid penalties potentially on the way. Let's go to the Japanese Grand Prix. We come to you live today from the Mi Prefecture in the south of Japan's Honshu Island for a race that has seen many title deciders over the years. Some simple, some controversial, but all contributing to a legacy that makes the Japanese Grand Prix an indispensable stop in any Formula One season. 
We're southwest of the city of Nagoya today at the unique figure of eight Suzuka circuit. 3.6 miles and 18 corners make up a lap here with average speeds approaching 136 miles per hour. DRS will be available, of course, into the potential passing opportunity at turn one, although the best place for overtaking will be through 130R and into the final chicane. Off the back of a fantastic qualifying session, it's time to see how our starting grid looks like for today's race. Max Verstappen put in a fantastic lap yesterday and he'll start from pole position. And the smooth operator Carlos Sainz completes the front row. Considering the rest of the grid, we have Russell, Hamilton, Valtteri Bottas and Fernando Alonso, Mick Schumacher, Leclerc, Ricardo and Lando Norris. Joe, Magnussen, Alex Albon, and Perez. They've taken a grid penalty. Vettel, Latifi, Pierre Gasly, and Esteban Ocon. Sonoda, Golden Boy. They'll be starting further back after an earlier grid penalty. Stroll, and Oscar Piastri. Which of these talented drivers will come out on top today? Anthony Davidson joins me once again in the commentary box. and it's fantastic to have you with us here. But I'm curious, as a man with experience out on the track, how do you stop those pre-race nerves from becoming overwhelming when you're lining up on the grid? Well, I imagine they'll be starting to feel the adrenaline as they anticipate the rundown into Turn 1, a bit like preparing to go into battle. The unknown situation will bring nerves, but that's a good thing. It will keep them focused on the moment and on their surroundings as we build towards the start of the Grand Prix. How about that? 10 grid penalties here handed out in the Japanese GP as we are ready to go lights out from Suzuka. That's a lot of grid penalties here and it does move us up by only one position. We're in P20 instead of P21. Our teammate of Piastri is well taking a grid penalty, uh, but he starts in the same spot that he already qualified and Stroll with a grid penalty. Everybody around us actually uh, taking a grid penalty and myself actually. I forgot about myself, so you can count myself in that one too. So uh, nonetheless, so getting it ready to go. Lights out here from Suzuka. Now, as Yuki Sonoda there in the AlphaTauri, Esteban Ocon, as well as uh, Sonoda's teammate Gasly there in 18th, as well as 17th position here. As we're going to have Red Bull racing up there on the front row. It's going to be light zone. We are underway here from the Japanese Grand Prix. Sorry, not Red Bull racing on the front row. Just one Red Bull car, but it's Max Verstappen who has a tremendous start down into turn one. And he is already saying, see you later. Carlos signs into second place. You got Hamilton and Russell side by side for third place right there. Uh, as you got the Alfa Romeo of Bontas with a very good start position here. Alonso just behind Fernando Alonso's final Japanese Grand Prix here in his Formula 1 career. Uh, I really hope we can see Fernando get a podium at some point throughout the final races of this season. And now that maybe grid penalties are starting to pick up a little bit here, uh, maybe we could see that. I at least hope we do see that. It was unfortunate that he didn't have his opportunity last episode in Singapore because if you guys remember, in Singapore we had a first time winner in Formula 1 and that was George Russell with the Mercedes team. Lando Norris actually got second place. Lewis Hamilton third. It was an all British podium actually uh, in the Singapore GP. Speaking of Norris, he lunges up the inside of Ricardo and actually up the inside of Charles Leclerc to the hairpin as well. You can really make some dive bombs happen there and Norris proving that uh, very easily, very much so there into that hairpin now. Is everybody else still actually getting into the kind of single file here? Uh, as you can see, all the kind of uh, parity we have throughout this grid with the grid penalties that were handed out there. As you see, Alex Albon in the Williams. Alex Albon in the Williams is has been so good, so much better than Nicholas Latif and he has been performing very, very well here so far. And I feel like that's a driver that we could see maybe move up to a better team next season. Now, we do know Fernando Alonso is retiring from this career mode. I would put I would put myself, I would put Albon in that Alpine. If, if I was Alpine, obviously they could have a chance to steal uh, Oscar Piastri from our own Trankhouse Racing team. Obviously, they lent Trankhouse uh, uh, Oscar Piastri for the season. So, speaking of Oscar uh, Piastri, he's going to actually go up my inside here into turn one. I was struggling on pace on this opening lap, and I just didn't want to fight Oscar here on lap two, so I let him go. Uh, Stroll was into the pits, actually picked up some wing damage there down in turn one. A little bit of oversteer there from the Australian just in front of us there on the exit of the corner, but Max Verstappen out in front here uh, in the Japanese Grand Prix. Now, as we were continuing to try and hold it within the DRS range here of Piastri, but actually, uh, I was struggling a little bit here. Got a warning already on lap three. It's not good when you get a warning that early on. As long as we don't get a second one before, say, the halfway point of the Grand Prix, we should be okay, but... Uh, 
as the laps were going on, the pace in the car started to improve and I was actually starting to reel in Oscar Piastri. So, you know, this track house car down on pace. It, it's the, no secret there, but that was what we expected here at the end of the season. It's all about just surviving and, and making the most of what we can when the opportunities arise. And will we get any of those opportunities today here? That's the next question. Now, as we continue to close in on Piastri, this time we got the DRS open here and we're on overtake. We're going to swing to the left-hand side here down into turn one. It's going to be side by side around the outside here and we're going to make the pass complete there on Piastri. A very nice pass on our teammate of Oscar Piastri. Nearly some contact there on the exit of the right-hander. So we move up into now uh, 20th position here and a lot of racing remains here in Japan now as we try to run down Yuki Sonoda, uh, Esteban Ocon as well. Yellow flags actually up ahead and it's for Sergio Perez in the Red Bull. He actually went wide into the sand or into the gravel pit. So here you see just a quick look at it right there. Just went off the track into the gravel. So uh, we were behind him. Perez was behind Sonoda trying to repass him here now and I was hoping this could be an opportunity if these two get battling for myself to uh, kind of close in on the battle there is actually Alex Albon into the pit lane already he's going to put on the hard compound tire here as you can see down in the final chicane Sonoda with a lock up there Perez gets through we get side by side with Sonoda who runs into the left side of us and we get sideways we save it but we're wheel to wheel now with Sonoda who's not going to have DRS and we will as you can see pit stops around us kicking off as well uh, more drivers into the pit lane but we get ahead of Sonoda and now move up into briefly the 14th position as this pit cycle is underway. Uh, as you can see here, lap 9, Lewis Hamilton into the final chicane does the same thing Sunoda did and actually locks up and allows George Russell to slip past. So as these tires are wearing, we're noticing some drivers starting to lock up into that final chicane. Hopefully uh, we don't add ourselves to that list anytime soon here now as you can actually see Yuki Sunoda lap 12 putting the pressure back to me trying to go around the inside here out of this third sector but I'm going to try and continue to stay ahead here at least until the pit stop here. That was the goal now as we are going to be wheel to wheel close tight quarters right there with Yuki now in his home race now but we are going to be able to get ourselves back out in front of Sonoda so we hold on briefly as pit stops in front of us we're kicking off here comes Max Verstappen into the pit lane your race leader uh, Lewis Hamilton is going to come in as well and, and pretty much everybody was flooding into the pit lane at this point in time and uh, including myself we were coming in this lap here to put on the hard compound tire we have a history so far this season of having some uh, pit lane uh, malfunctions or errors here and we would have exactly that once again they would be able to not get that right rear off here and it would have to wiggle around until they finally got it off so another pit error here and that's something I think we actually really need to spend some money on is our pit crew because they aren't costing us some time but honestly um, you know right now while we have a car that's not competitive enough for points I'm not really concerned about uh, the pit crew now when we get to a car that can compete for points of course it's gonna be a different story here now as you can see Carlos Sainz actually uh, surprisingly uh, pits after Max Verstappen and is able to get out in front of him. So Carlos Sainz takes the lead of this race. This is a bit of a trend I've been noticing here in this F122 career mode and I think it all comes down to the tire temperatures here. Uh, the hard compound tire, it takes a, a whole lap just about to warm up that tire uh, to the optimal temperature to get it into a good racing tire basically. So uh, you know, it, it really seems like it's it, uh, it depends on the track really because in Japan you can get away with it. So Carlos Sainz staying out an extra lap is going to gain probably two to maybe even three seconds on say Verstappen who pitted a lap earlier because he has to spend that lap warming up the tires. He's not going to gain any time uh, on Carlos Sainz during that lap. So Carlos is able to come out in front of Verstappen and yeah he's going to lose two to three seconds as well but if he's in front of Max at a track like Japan where it's very difficult to pass he should be able to stay ahead. The tire gets into that optimal temperature by the end of the lap and he's still ahead because it's so hard to pass here that he's just able to now actually manage that gap. So, uh, certain tracks where it's difficult to pass, I think the overcut is actually a significantly better idea uh, than the undercut. And that's something I'm definitely going to keep in mind as well uh, going forward. Now, if we go to a track, say, Baku, I'm definitely not going to try and overcut there. Uh, but a track like Suzuka, uh, as well as even Koda, you could definitely do that because of the S's section. They don't pass through the S's section. So, that is also a prime opportunity to try and overcut. Another lock up here into that final chicane from Sebastian Vettel here now within the final 10 laps of this Grand Prix. Everybody locking up in today's episode has been in the same corner now as we are closing in on the closing laps and actually Kevin Magnussen is going to be out. That's going to be our first retirement of the day in the Haas. You see the smoke pouring out the back. So Magnussen is out here from the Japanese GP unfortunately. So coming to three laps to go. Moves us up at a 19th place here. Now we were over three seconds ahead of Piastri at this point but you know a very calm race. One of the calmest races I think so far this season here in this F122 My Team 
career mode. Carlos Sainz, uh, since he took the lead, actually had to defend quite a bit over Max Verstappen. Verstappen was still all over uh, Sainz, even as they got the final lap underway, but it's just uh, Verstappen didn't seem to be able to find an opportunity to actually get past Carlos Sainz, even with the DRS assistance here, as I'm going to go wide, give him a third warning of the day, and a three-second time penalty. We're only ahead by 3.3 seconds over Piastri, so that is going to actually be pretty close here on this final lap, as we would get this final lap underway, up to 3.6 seconds over Piastri. Can we hang on? It's all going to be down to can we get through Sector 1, which is probably the easiest set of corners to completely throw a bunch of time away, uh, as we come through now into these S's. It's crucial right here. 3.9 seconds so, so far, we're good, and I already missed an apex here, so there's a little bit of time gone right there, and I, I definitely didn't get through these S's very good, but it's going to be Carlos Sainz for the second time in his Formula 1 career and this season. He will come through to win here in Japan over Max Verstappen. George Russell is going to fill out the podium. Lewis Hamilton, Charles Leclerc, your champion of the season there in P5, as we are going to come through into the final chicane as well. Now the gap is down to 2.9 seconds over the course of this final lap. Now it gets up to 3.1, but the gap is going to be very very, very close. It goes down to 3.0. What is it going to be? It was too close to tell when we crossed the line. It says P20, which means P Astri did get us within the three seconds. We'll have to wait and see the official timing after the post-race celebrations. Driver of the day going to go to Sergio Perez. Let's head to the podium here for the celebrations. That's a spectacular victory, and with it, the championship is secure. It's been a magnificent season, and they thoroughly deserve the cheers of the crowd here today. Tell me, Ant, how do you think they were able to deliver such an incredible result today? I think that smart tyre management on track and very smooth driving definitely assisted in their victory today. That combination meant they got the absolute maximum out of their tyres at all times. Looking at the podium, you can see that red suit familiar to fans across the globe. A world-class win for a world-class team. Ferrari, do it again. Even when Charles Leclerc isn't winning for Ferrari, it's Carlos Sainz stepping up to the plate. Two wins on the season for Carlos. You know, there's like 11 for Leclerc, uh, which is why I won the World Drivers' Championship so early and why I'm so excited for these regulation changes next season. I uh, hopefully take Ferrari off of their absolute dominance. It's insane. And you, you look at the R&D, and it's no wonder why Ferrari is so dominant because they have a nice, considerable space uh, between them and Red Bull as well as Mercedes. But one major upgrade from one of those teams, I think, would actually put them pretty well dead even with Ferrari. So we'll have to wait and see what happens there if one of those teams can make that happen either before the season's over or going into next season as well. And there you see the timing. Piastri actually was able to get us by less than uh, like half a tenth of a second. It was about half a tenth, not even, uh, that Piastri was able to get us by there because of that three second time penalty, uh, unfortunately there. So we end up P20, should have been P19 as we're still at the bottom of the constructors with only one single point for Trackhouse Racing racing uh, and going into these next episode uh, episodes we're just continuing to try and make sure that we can have all these parts adapted and you know the adapting process has gone a lot smoother than I expected here as we were looking at maybe spending a little bit of money here we got 3.6 million dollars to work with so I was thinking uh, of maybe going for the fabrication upgrade here on the powertrain so that way we can actually have two upgrades in the powertrain department instead of just one uh, at a time I feel like that could make a big difference especially uh, going into next season as well to be able to simultaneously uh, get some upgrades going in a specific department. So the powertrain is something that we are probably lacking the most in, so that's why I went for the powertrain. But you can see that all of our parts are now pretty much adapted, so we can actually start upgrading the car again, uh, which is very promising that we were able to adapt things so quickly. Now, in the next episode, though, we head into the Circuit of the Americas. If you guys enjoyed this one, you know what to do. It looks like we might actually be ahead of Williams going into Coda 2 in terms of the R&D, so we're making some gains again. But that is going to do it for me. Thank you all for taking the time out of your day for watching. I really do appreciate it, and I will see you guys in the next one from Circuit of the Americas. Have a great day, everybody.